What's going on everybody? Welcome back to Chud's Barbecue. My name is Bradley Robinson and today I'm going to show you how I made these beautiful, delicious, medium rare, juicy, amazing steaks. Three lesser known steaks that you may not have heard of. And we also got some cream spinach and some sauteed mushrooms for good measure. Coming up! One question I get asked all the time is, what is my favorite thing to cook? And most of the time my answer is the same, and that is a big juicy steak. Because first and foremost, it's a super quick cook, which is something I appreciate. But also it's always a fun challenge to get that really nice, super dark crust on the outside without overcooking the inside. But probably my favorite thing about steak is just the variety of cuts. You know, typically when you're talking about a steak, you're thinking ribeye, strip, or filet. But there are so many other cuts out there that all bring something different to the table. Whether that be intramuscular fat, a big fat cap, different grain structures, which equates to different tenderness, across different steaks and different muscles. And if you're just sticking to ribeye strips and fillets, you're missing out on a whole world of amazing steaks. So that being said, today I'm gonna to show you three lesser known steaks that you may or may not have heard of or ever cooked before, and it is going to be delicious. These are some steaks. Pat them dry. Three beautiful steaks, very happy with how these are looking. Starting in the middle here, we've got the baseball steak. This comes from the loin section of the cow. That's where you're gonna get your flank, your bavette, your tri-tip, your New York strips, things of that nature. And this is from the top sirloin, which is a cut where you're gonna get a lot of your typical sirloin steaks that you're gonna see at your grocery store. This is just a bit of a different presentation where it is cut nice and thick, nice and tall, kind of looks like a filet. Great for a dinner party. And if the people you're serving don't know any better, they'll probably just think it's a filet anyway. Gotta love a nice, big, beautiful, thick steak. Then over here we've got the Denver steak, also known as the Underblade steak. This is an amazing steak if you've never had it before. It's from the chuck, comes from right underneath the blade bone. So if you're ever cooking a pulled pork, you know that big flat bone. The cow also has a blade bone just like that. And this comes from right underneath that bone. And because this is from the chuck, it's got some really nice toothsomeness to it. As you can see, it's very well marbled, very tasty stuff. The grain kind of skews as you're going down. So it's something to take note of when you're looking at this thing raw so you know how to slice it at the end of the day. And for me, this is kind of a perfect weeknight steak cut because it's not too rich or too indulgent. It doesn't have a big fat cap on it. Makes for a great steak night dinner. And then on this side, you got the chuck eye. This is a steak I pick up every single time I see it at the grocery store, because as you can tell, just looking at it, it is an amazing cut. And it looks an awful lot like a ribeye because it's from the exact same muscle. It's from the very end of the ribeye, right where the ribeye leads into the chuck. So like a ribeye, we've got a beautiful fat caps, really nice intramuscular fat, but because it is from the chuck, it's gonna be a little less tender. And I think that's a good thing. This thing eats very well, nice and fatty, still very tender, full of flavor. You can easily convince someone that they're eating ribeye with this cut but it's a lot cheaper. And you may be sitting there being like, Bradley, I've never seen any of these cuts at my local grocery store. Where did you get these beautiful steaks? Well, this video is brought to you by RC Ranch. You may be familiar with RC Ranch if you saw my Picanha video from a few weeks back, but RC Ranch is a ranch based in Houston, Texas, just a few hours down the road. And I must admit that this is some of the best beef I've ever tasted. I mean, just look at the marbling on that beautiful Denver steak. Can't go wrong with that. And because RC Ranch utilizes full carcass butchery, it's the perfect place to find some of these butcher cuts, these secret cuts, these off cuts that you're not gonna see at your big box stores because they use every part of the animal, whether that's rendering their own tallow or these lesser known cuts like the chuck eye, the baseball, the Denver, the hanger, you get the point. And they really just put a lot of care into every step of the process. Every cut I've got from them has been perfectly trimmed. There's never anything hanging off, no silver skin, anything like that. It comes nicely vac sealed and you can really tell they take pride in what they're doing. And the flavor is just spectacular. I know Wagyu beef isn't something you're gonna eat every day of the week, but if you really wanna have an incredible meal, RC Ranch is a great place to pick up some amazing cuts. They also have a butcher shop in Houston where they make charcuterie and their own sausages. So if you're in the Houston area, I highly recommend stopping by. I go through a lot of meat making these videos and I do try and stay away from the commodity beef that you're gonna get from your big box stores. And working with locally sourced beef from family owned ranches in my area is something that makes me really happy because it really is a win-win. Not only is this beef locally sourced, treated well, there's also the added benefit of the super high quality of their meat. Just the taste and the marbling really comes through and the taste really does speak for itself. So if you wanna try some of the best Wagyu beef Texas has to offer, head to rcranch.com. I'll have a link in the description box of this video where you can use code CHUDS15 to get 15% off your order. Again, that's rcranch.com using code CHUDS15 to get 15% off your order. Link in description. Thank you, RC Ranch. As I mentioned, getting a really great crust on your steak is of the utmost importance when trying to make the perfect steak. And a great way to go about doing that is by utilizing a dry brine. 
which simply means we're gonna hit this with a nice coating of some kosher salt and just let it hang out in the fridge for a while, which is beneficial in two different ways. One, because this will be uncovered in the fridge, we will end up with a drier exterior, which means when we put this on the grill, we'll get a much better sear. And also this thing will be seasoned all the way throughout. Win, win, win. And don't forget the sides, folks. Come on, rookie move. And especially on these bigger thick cuts like this baseball here, a dry brine is definitely gonna help out because we don't wanna have a salty exterior and a bland interior. Beautiful. And timing for your dry brine can be anywhere from a few hours to a few days. For me, I'm gonna pop these in my fridge overnight and we'll grill these off tomorrow. One day later. Out of the fridge these come and these are looking beautiful. Notice you can't see any of the salt anymore. That's a really good sign that it made its way all the way into this meat. Feeling a little bit more firm, looking a little bit more red and nice and dry on the exterior, which means we're gonna get a beautiful sear. But first, let's make a few side dishes. Starting with some green spinach. Squeezer of some oil and a whole bunch of spinach. Oh yeah, shrinking up real quick. And just like that, just a few minutes later, all this spinach, that's a full pound of spinach in there, has fully wilted down. Into this mesh strainer we go. Just gonna let this cool and push out as much of this liquid as we can. Next up, let's make our cream sauce. Starting with a knob of butter. Once well, nice, hot, and bubbling, we're gonna go in with our shallot and let that soften up. While that's cooking away, we're gonna go in with a nice big pinch of some salt, a couple of cranks of some black pepper, pinch of some red chili flakes, as well as grating a fresh nut of some nutmeg. Ooh, smells so good out here. And while we got the zester out, we're gonna go in with a little lemon zest as well. Beautiful. And now for the cream portion of this cream sauce, we're going in with some cream. And after just a few minutes, this is reduced down and thickened up dramatically. And that is looking pretty good to me. Love it. And now for our beautifully drained spinach, we're going to just go through and give that a rough chop. Beautiful. Into the cream sauce it goes. And once all mixed together and heated through, our cream spinach is done. We're going to set this aside to keep warm for the next little bit. Next up, we're going to bust out another super quick and easy side dish, starting with some butter yet again, followed by some shiitake mushrooms. Cause I don't know about you, but steak and mushrooms just go together so well. And they're super easy to make. They're gonna start to lose some moisture, shrink up and get nice and toasty. Go on with a big pinch of salt, kind of help that process along a little bit, as well as season it. And a couple shots of some black pepper, cause why not? We're gonna go in with some super thinly shaved shallots and some minced garlic. Oh, smelling so good. And last but not least, I'm gonna go in with a little bit of soy sauce. Boost that umami a little bit. Oh, that smells heavenly. Be sure to give this a taste for seasoning and our beautiful sauteed mushrooms are done. Now that our quick steakhouse side dishes are done, I think it's time to fire up the pit. Steakhouse? More like a snake house. All right, folks, moment of truth. Time to grill off these beautiful steaks. I hit these with a little bit of oil just to help with the sear. Got a big, nice hot fire. And we're just gonna build up a beautiful crust. Won't take long. Oh, look at that, beautiful already. Just gonna flip these periodically to make sure they cook evenly. Oh, smelling heavenly. Ooh. And right after you oil them would be another good time to add some pepper or some garlic powder, something like that, whatever seasonings you like. But I don't know, lately I've just been doing just the salt crust and then adding some fresh cracked pepper at the end for more of a fresh pepper taste, a little bit more of a textural difference. Also, when you're cooking this hot, the pepper can burn up. But that being said, I've been known to do it many different ways. This is just what I'm doing lately. Just getting all sides, especially for this big baseball steak. But just a few minutes each side till we get that nice crust we're looking for. You know the drill, folks. We're just grilling to the cool side. It comes pulling these off. They're still reading real cold on the inside, 75 degrees. But we're gonna let these chill on this side for just a little bit, maybe a good 10 minutes for that carryover from the sear to penetrate through so we can really get an accurate reading before we throw this lid on. It's been about six, seven minutes and this guy over here is reading 106 degrees right now, meaning that's a jump of almost 30 degrees just in a few minutes. And it's still going up, just hit 107. So this is why I really like to wait for the carryover to really continue through before I put the lid on for a really gentle finish if it needs it because a lot of people overcook their steaks because they underestimate the power of the carry over. All right, at this point, I'm gonna go on with the lid and let these continue to cook until they come up to an internal temperature of around 125. That's usually where I like it. And just like that, a few minutes later, all of our beautiful steaks are up to temp. And I must say, they are all looking absolutely beautiful. So now to be a little bit more luxurious, we're gonna finish these off with some melted butter, just for good measure, cause why not? Come on, oh yeah, I wish someone would do this to me. And then to finish these off, I'm gonna sear that butter right onto the meat for just a few seconds to make sure everything is nice and hot and ready to serve. Ooh, 
Yes, please. And now we're gonna finish these off with some freshly cracked black pepper. I think it's time to dive in. Starting with the chuck eye here, and as similar to a ribeye as this is, it's definitely not as pretty, you know? It definitely wants to separate a little bit more. Not as great of a presentation, but I'm sure it'll still taste absolutely fantastic. Looking good to me, nice and pink. Gotta love that. Boink. Next up, the Denver. So I'm gonna start by cutting this thing in half. Ooh, chuddy likey. That is a sight of beauty. So I'm just trying to go against the grain here. Get some nice thick slices. And that is why I love a Denver steak. Oh, it's so beautiful. So fatty, beautiful, medium rare. Fan that out for a beautiful presentation. And now the big baseball steak. Ooh, this thing cooks more like a roast than anything else. Big old thick steak, but I'd say that is a nice looking medium, medium rare to me. And oh, so juicy. Love it. Can't forget the sides though, folks. And I was gonna go with some Parmesan on this cream spinach, but then I remembered that I had some of these cured egg yolks lying around from the grilled seafood episode. So we're just gonna pop that on the old microplane here. And I think that's just gonna be heavenly. Beautiful. And there it is in all its glory, folks. A beautiful steak dinner. Well, feast, I should say. Looking absolutely lovely. I think it's time to dive in. Let's go for it, shall we? Starting with the chuck eye. Oh, mm. Mm. Oh, so good. Nice and fatty, nice and tender. A little more beefy, a little more toothsome than a ribeye, but very similar. Truly a great bite if you've never picked one up before. Oh, mm. and the crust is perfect. It's got that charcoal flavor to it. Seasoned all the way throughout. Gotta love that. Can't go wrong with the dry brine. Oh, mm. that is fantastic. Next up, let's go for this Denver steak, shall we? Definitely went a little on the rare side on this one, and I'm not mad about it. Boop. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. So beefy, so rich, incredible crust on there. I mean, this is just a perfect steak in my opinion, you know? It's just got everything you need. Good crust, good amount of chew, still nice and tender. The intramuscular fat is there. Doesn't have a big fat cap on it, so it's not too rich. You know, this is a great like weeknight dinner steak or something like that. Oh, mm, so good. I'm spoiling myself today. Steak mountain. And last but not least, we've got the old baseball steak. Mmm, it's more tender than I thought. Mm-hmm. That is a great steak. There's nothing wrong with that, you know? This would also be a great cut for some steak sandwiches. Tell you what. That sirloin flavor, can't beat it. And of course, we got these beautiful side dishes to go with it. Mmm, oh, that is lovely. Mm-hmm. Creamy, spinachy, that egg yolk on top, very nice touch, highly recommend it. Pairs very nicely with some beautiful steaks. I tell you what. Mmm, and of course, we got these umami bomb mushrooms here. Ah, uh, mmm. I love mushrooms. They're so good. God, these flies are absolutely out of control today. These are all fantastic steaks. Always a great option to keep in your arsenal. And it's fun cooking different steaks because all three of these cooked entirely differently. Very fun. Highly recommend it. Out of the three, honestly, I thought the Chuck I was going to take it. But for me, that Denver is perfect. And you definitely got to make some of these sides. <clears throat> but all that being said, I think it's time for the official taste test. Boop. Yeah, bitch, bitch, bitch. All right, y'all, and that is it. That is how to cook three lesser known steaks that you may have not ever cooked before that I highly recommend you do. And it's a great way to please a crowd. You know, I got a lot of picky eaters in my family that don't like ribeyes because they're too fatty or too greasy, or they don't like New York strips because of that thick band of gristle that's running through the fat cap. And if you've got people like that in your life as well, reaching for a Denver steak or a baseball steak or something like that is a great way to make sure everyone is happy. But that being said, if you enjoyed this video, let me know by hitting that subscribe button. Let YouTube know by dropping a like on this video. If you pick up any of these steaks for yourself, be sure to tag me on Instagram at Chud's Bar. I'd love to see what y'all are cooking. Big shout out to all the Patreon members. Thank you for supporting Team Chud and allowing me to keep making all these videos. And until the next time I see you, please go cook something outside. Peace.